The Toronto Raptors are in the midst of a 15-game winning streak and as the hottest team in the NBA, have firmly put themselves in the discussion to represent the Eastern Conference in the NBA Finals. With a completely balanced team led by a single and first-time All-Star, the Raptors have been forcing teams to play their way. And based on their upcoming schedule, there's no reason to think that this winning streak won't last a little while longer. The first thing I want to look at is Nick Nurse's reliance on zone defense. I've already done a video on this, and it's worth looking at a few more clips to explain what works and why it's so disruptive. Their preferred alignment is 3-2, with three wings across the top and two bigs on the blocks. Remember, they can't stay in the paint not guarding anybody for over three seconds. And also notice that they put the incredibly long Siakam in the middle out top. He basically morphs into the center of a 2-3 zone on this drive, and because he's no smallish guard, can thwart Ben Simmons and force the turnover. Because they push up to a three-player front, they can cover the wings a lot easier, and they can pressure, unafraid of getting beat with Hollis Jefferson and Ibaka backing them up. As the pick and roll happens, watch how they break into a man-to-man -man defense. It's very difficult to attack a defense that can seamlessly shift from zone to man. There are vulnerabilities to any zone, and you can see the overload above the dotted line leaves a cutter wide open near the basket, but with Siakam and Ibaka's length, it's not so easy to throw that pass. The offense never gets the ball below the free throw line extended and is forced to burp up a shot they don't want. It's nice when you've got good communicators, as Lowry quarterbacks the play from the weak side, and Serge can see that no one is in his zone, so he only takes a step or two over to overload and pick up Drummond, forcing him into a bad miss. Attacking into the middle is always a good idea against any zone, and you can see how this could have resulted in either a layup or open three, but the easiest pass is made, and you're not going to get a backdoor cut along the baseline against this zone. The Pistons try to take out Van Vliet with a double screen, but all Siakam has to do is step up and eliminate the shot. The defense can rest and get back in position, and all the offense can generate is a catch and shoot in the corner with Ibaka in the air to help force the miss. Here's another example of good containment on the initial attack with a ball screen, and the Pistons miss a little bounce pass to Drummond who has Siakam sealed on his back, but once it goes back out top, the defense breaks into a man-to-man -to, -man to defend the pick and roll under 10 seconds left on the shot clock. Lowry gets handsy and forces the turnover. Watch how Lowry reads what they're trying to do, find an open shooter in the corner. So he calls to Siakam to go from the midline to the wing. Now it looks like a traditional 2-3. The offense gets nothing out of it. The defense morphs into a man-to-man -man as the shot clock is an extra defender. Against Indiana, they played some triangle and two. McCaw is absolutely glued to McDermott in the left corner, and Terrence Davis is face guarding Holiday. Before the Pacers can figure it out, they're throwing it away. Same defense here, and look how confused the other three players are, unsure what they're going to do as a three-man unit to generate a shot. And the two guys playing man can be ultra-aggressive because they're not worried about getting beat. The zone is behind them. On this one, however, Aaron Holiday makes them pay. Watch how Siakam starts in the nail in the middle of the free throw line, then takes the cutter going through in the post entry pass, and then becomes center of a 2 3 zone by staying down on the block. Anunobi doesn't have to worry about much except closing out. Notice how he turns his back on his man. This actually gives him more explosiveness to recover and block this shot. More value to putting Siakam in the middle to start rather than down low on the block. He's in charge of the high post, scares DeRozan away from taking a shot, then prevents him from driving baseline. Now you've got Ibaka and Siakam defending the rim. That's too much for the Spurs to handle. Despite getting into the lane, Murray can't finish. This zone has some organic qualities to it, shifting and reshaping on the fly. Siakam reads this early and already gets to the left side to cover the corner, basically moving from the middle out top to the forward down low. Now the Raptors can basically defend this man-to-man -man for less than 7 seconds and get the steal with plenty of help on the drive. The Sixers empty the left corner and that allows Anunobi to overload the weak side next to Gasol. 
he even begins to close out to the right wing before heading back to his side now that there's a player there. Gasol can easily come over to help and they force another turnover. I can't say enough good things about how these players are performing and what Nick Nurse is doing by switching up his defense from zone to man and adding a full court press. It's the kind of thing you'd appreciate even better in person, and that means getting tickets to a Raptors game using SeatGeek. Download SeatGeek now to your phone, and you'll get the best tickets for any sporting event, concert, or the theater. With just a few taps, you'll be able to see what seats are available, the prices are graded to let you know if you're getting a great deal, they've got seating charts and viewpoints from each seat, and best of all, if you use my code BBALL, you'll get 20 bucks off your first purchase. So use the SeatGeek app, save 20 bucks off your first purchase, and get great seats. That way, you can fully appreciate how Nick Nurse runs his huddles and gets his players to play so gosh darned hard. Let's move over to the offense, shall we? One thing that stands out to me in the stats is a huge increase in pace. They've been rewarded handsomely, going from 8.9 transition makes per game before the streak to a whopping 12.9 the last 15 games. Combine this with their incredibly stingy defense, and it's easy to see why they're firing on all cylinders and making every single team in the league very nervous about playing them. On top of all that, when you look at how they execute their after timeout plays, where Nick Nurse has the most effect when they run set plays, it's easy to see how this team is a coach's dream. This set starts with an Iverson cut across the top, a ball screen to the right, but it's really about a pin down on the right baseline where Terrence Davis has been lighting it up from behind the arc. Here's something similar where they run a cutter across the free throw line, then find a pin down on the right corner. I like how it immediately flows into the pick and roll, the defense never gets a second to recover, and Boucher tosses it in. A quick little weave on the right side gets the defense moving till they hit them with some blind pig action out of the triangle offense. When they have to stop the ball, it leaves Ibaka open to get to the rim for the and one. I like this one where they X two guards off the high post screen from Gasol before releasing pressure with a centering pass out top to him. Keep your eye on Lowry who sets the back screen for Siakam and this opens up deep post position for him to score off the glass. Here's a variation of that play where Lowry cuts through and sets a screen for Siakam on the weak side corner. Good screen, good cut, easy shot. They really like cutting Lowry through the lane and then setting that cross screen in flex action. When the switch happens and Siakam isn't open, Lowry gets his own pin down for a wide open three ball. These last two are out of a double high post horn set and this time it's Van Vliet who enters to the high post cuts behind the weak side elbow to go cross screen for the corner. Again, the defense switches this and the set flows into a pin down from Ibaka. Here's that flow back into a pick and roll again and my man Fred Van Vliet can knock down the jumper. Same play again, this time the defense does a good job to contain just about everything. But notice that if Van Vliet is not open on the pin down, it simply flows into a handoff for him, and when the defense messes up the switch, he'll make them pay every single time. But my absolute favorite thing they get a whole lot of is hammer action for open corner threes. This one starts with Siakam sprinting up to set an inside ball screen, but it's misdirection as Lowry is driving baseline the whole time. Watch Gasol circle around to set a flare screen for Matt Thomas. The pass wasn't accurate, but he's so open, it doesn't matter. This time, Ibaka screens for Hollis Jefferson before circling back to set that back screen for Powell. Notice how the pass comes right at the baseline, Van Vliet releasing it and then stepping out of bounds just after, and Powell has got another jumper. This is so effective because the two bigs cross through the lane and it sells the ball screen to the point the weak side defender of the shooter doesn't know what hits him, and the defender of the screener is too concerned with the drive. It's truly amazing how often this works for him. All because the weak side defender of the shooter just isn't aware of the play and gets taken out all too often. But that's what basketball is about. Clever team movement operating like five fingers on a hand. And there's no doubt in my mind that when they're completely healthy, the Raptors could recreate what they had going last year. And that means another appearance in the NBA Finals. And who knows? 
maybe even, dare I say, another title. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to B-Ball Breakdown so you can get alerted right away when we drop a new video. This season will be filled with incredible content, so don't miss it. You in?